applications of coordination compounds. There's actually really a lot of great applications. Chelating agents. So ethylene diamine tetracetate ion, short EDTA, 4 minus, has six lone pairs. It can form very stable complexes. So it can be used to treat heavy metal poisoning. So if you put in calcium EDTA, um, the EDTA will complex with the lead and give up the calcium. And it will hold on to that lead and then your body's able to just, you know, get rid of it. So it's, it's sort of like it goes in and it just grabs it. And when something is chelated, when an ion is chelated, it doesn't undergo the same interactions as, as it does when it's a free ion. So essentially it makes it okay. Um, some ligands are selected for specific metal ions. We can use them in chemical analysis. Um, uh, thiocyanide, sorry, thiocyanate is um, used to test for cobalt and for iron. Um, it'll give you a, a pretty blue color for cobalt 2 and a deep red color for cobalt 3. And I believe we use that in our um, qual scheme lab practical thing. Other ligands are also going to form colored uh, compounds and sometimes they precipitate as well. We can use um, complex ions as coloring agents. Um, iron blue is used in, in lots of different things, ink, cosmetics, blueprints. It's a mixture of hexacyano complexes of iron 2 and iron 3. There are a lot of metal complexes in living systems. Here are some examples. Um, chromium works with insulin. Manganese works with um, fat and carbohydrate synthesis. Uh, most important one here is iron. Iron works with hemoglobin to transport oxygen in your blood. So biomolecules, here's hemoglobin and cytochrome C. Um, both of these have heme, which is a complex of iron and a porphyrin. It's a flat polydentate ligand. And that the heme is connected to the protein. So the porphyrin has four nitrogen atoms that can coordinate to a metal ion. So here, just looking at the heme, um, there are the nitrogen atoms, and they've got lone pairs, and so they will coordinate, coordinately bond with the um, metal ion. So the, the molecule, um, you've got all this protein around it, but this is the part that's taking the iron and releasing it. Well, I was talking about hemoglobin. That cytochrome C does something else. Um, here we have um, hemoglobin. Same idea. Um, so here we have the nitrogen with the four, the four nitrogens with the iron in the middle. Um, and that makes a square planar arrangement. And then the, um, the nitrogen from one of the proteins comes in to make a fifth site. And then the sixth site in the octahedral complex is either oxygen or water. Carbonic anhydrase um, catalyzes the reaction between water and carbon dioxide in respiration. So that's kind of important. Um, this involves zinc. Um, it's bound in a tetrahedral complex. Three of the sites occupied by nitrogen from surrounding amino acids, and one site binds the water molecule. When the water molecule bonds to the zinc, the zinc draws the electron density out so that the water will readily lose a proton. And then the bound hydroxide ion that's left will react with the CO2 and form the uh, hydrogen carbonate ion. Other bio biomolecules, chlorophyll, also porphyrin based, but it's got um, magnesium is the ion it works with and it doesn't have a surrounding protein. That of course is essential for photosynthesis. Um, we've also got biomolecules used as 
drugs and therapeutic agents. Uh, cisplatin um, is an effective cancer drug. It functions by attaching to the cancer cell's DNA.